Uh, good evening, everyone. So my name is Simonas. Uh, today I will try to take about one hour of your time and uh, to speak a bit uh, what's my view on the on the, on the commer on commercial aviation in my in my broken Eastern European English. I hope you will you will you will get uh, at least at least of uh, at least some ideas uh, what I wanted to tell about. So in short, I called my presentation trend spotting. So, so, so I will try to go through a little bit about the trends and to speak more about network planning and commercial, commercial side of, 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 of aviation business. So I uh, actually started in aviation exactly 10 years ago uh, in 2009, uh, back in September. So, so it, it was ex almost exactly 10 years ago, I took my first uh, job in aviation, which was uh, Vilnius International Airport at that time. Currently, they merged with, 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 with other airports in, a, in one company. Then after four years, I left uh, to, 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 to help to start uh, the project called uh, Air Lithuanica. So it bankrupted. It bankrupted. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I went to Small Pilot Airlines. And uh, as most of you know, they, 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 they also, we also went out of business last uh, November, December. So uh, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm I'm really enjoying uh, being in this, in this, in this, uh, in this, in this business, because I'm still enjoying uh, being a traveler in in in, in, in any airline uh, I'm able to fly. So uh, at, the, at, the, at the right bottom corner, there is some statistics about my personal uh, personal data about my flying. So I already spent more than two thousand hours in the air, sitting in the in the in the, in the, in the passenger seat. So. If you if you if you heard uh, about uh, ten thousand hours theory that if you want to be a pro in in, in something you have to spend ten thousand hours in that so if if, if I will live long enough I hope I will reach some 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 some, some time ten thousand hours so I will be able to call myself uh, like professional traveler yeah? or professional professional airline passenger. Uh, so yeah, before before I jumped into aviation, I have no education in aviation. I I, I was a programmer at, 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 at some time ago. Then I was in, I was working in some uh, advertising agencies. Then then then, then in marketing, but at some point uh, I, I don't remember which which year exactly it was. Maybe 2006 and 2007. I started to write something about about uh, about uh, about aviation in my blog. So that's why maybe I'm I'm still being called uh, an aviation blogger, and uh, and then I'm still uh, I'm still continuing uh, continuing doing that uh, in in some in, in in some cases. So what I'm doing now I'm now working uh, for the company called CH Aviation. How many of you heard about 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 CH Aviation? One hand, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, fine. Uh, we are mainly known uh, being a news source. Uh, 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 writing about 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 uh, airline business, we are uh, more like B two B source uh, of news. So 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 we are uh, under the paywall. Uh, most of our, most of most of our our articles are. So we are not so 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 famous in B two C. But our actually core business, we are running. Uh, we call it uh, software as a service uh, as a service business, which mainly is. Uh, Data and analytics uh, you can subscribe and you can you can you can get access to, and what's what's the data inside? We 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 actually uh, tracking uh, almost every not almost but every commercial aircraft flying in the world which has more uh, more than twenty seats. So all types of aircraft, including active uh, scrapped or or, or or crashed or whatever it is. Including our cycles, uh, ownership, and 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 stuff. We are also providing data about the airlines, about the airports, about the about the schedules, capacities, and some tailored uh, tailored data solutions we are providing for 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 the customers worldwide. So we have close to thousand customers, mainly leasing companies, aircraft manufacturers, some airlines, airports, uh, consulting companies. They are using our data to 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 develop their business or to get some insights or or, or to find customers or whatever it is. And uh, because uh, uh, okay, uh, one more one more thing, and I, uh, I I I started to think what's 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 the story about the presentation? What should I tell? And I remembered uh, that back in 2012, so it was seven years ago. 
I wrote an article for, uh, at that point, uh, Andrew Stapin, as maybe most of you know him. He was running a business news website, which was called Pinegu Karta. He, he was running a TV show, and then he has a uh, web, uh, web website called Pinegu Karta .lt, and he And I was writing some <coughs> articles for him. And uh, one of the articles I wrote for him back in 2012 was that uh, in 2020, everyone will fly low cost airlines only. So, so, so uh, it, with, with, my current, with, my, with my next slides, I will try to defend my position, which is what, what, what I wrote uh, seven, 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 seven years ago. Uh, actually, the, the, the website Pinegu Karta is closed already, but I uh, found that, uh, that uh, Latovas Ritas was, was republishing this article. And uh, because at the very end of my presentation, I will touch some network planning uh, things about... about uh, uh, so, I want to ask you one thing. I, I, I put it one question on Slido. If you if you can, you can take your phones and then uh, then then go to Slido, uh, to, so it's slido.do or slido.com. I think it works also. Enter the code key as key as U. And then then the, there you will see one question. The question is, in your opinion, because most of you are in innovation or interested in innovation or or, or whatever. Uh, in your opinion, it's just it's just really personal opinion. It no, it, there is no wrong or, 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 or right answers. In your opinion, what is the destination from Vilnius Airport, which is currently unserved but would be popular if it exists, or it's uh, too underserved from Vilnius? So write, you write a city you think that uh, Vilnius network map is, is, is missing now. So, in my direct point of yes. Point? Yes, it can be New York uh, if you think it's uh, it's 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 viable, or or you think it's Ulaanbaatar or or, or 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 maybe some 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 city in Germany or some city in France which is not currently available directly. And at the very end of my presentation, we will try to to to, to go through the list what, what what was the most popular answers, and maybe to speak about that a bit. So you have some time, so I will speak further, and then 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 then, then later we'll see. All right, uh, the number one, two, three, four. What, what, what this number stands for? Actually, it's the number of airlines went out of business in the last 10 years. In CH Aviation, we have a, we have a tool called Airlines, Airline Tracker. And we track any startup airline, any, any airline project which starts. So mo many of those airlines even haven't taken off. They were created, somebody funded to create up, but in the, in the, at some point they, 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 they failed in any position. So n number, it's really nice number, one, two, three, four. That's number of airlines went out of business in the in, 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 uh, last uh, 10 years. And I believe you know, you know many of the names which went out of business. Uh, in, this, uh, in this cemetery, I put, it, I put it the names. Actually, these all are airlines I have flown on. And actually, for two of them, I worked for. So, 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 you see that uh, the, the 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 airline business is really, really risky business. And then, then, then the airlines going back, uh, going, 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 going out of business almost every day. And uh, I think last one, last month was really, really uh, strong on that, if you call it like that. But 1984 or 1984. At one point, it's of course, it's, it's the name, it's the title of the book of, by, by, by James Orwell, George Orwell, I think. But it's actually the number of startup airlines created in the last <coughs> 10 years. So having in mind that there are, it's so risky business and there are so many airlines going out of business, there are some people who are creating new airlines. And the new airlines being created is actually even more than the ones which went of, out of business for the, for, the, for, the, for the last 10 years. In your opinion, why is it happening? Why is somebody is still investing in the airline business? 30% survival rate, quite good. 30% survival rate. Oh, yeah. what's, what's survival rate in your business? I Less. don't know. <laughs> Less, All right? Sexy business. Sexy business. Actually, that's, 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 that's really a good answer. 
I mean, there are some researches being made that investors are looking to the to the to the to the to the airline business as more sexy business, and they if they see that if the possible return rates are similar with with, with with another business, they say if if they see that it's all oh, it's similar than another business, I put some money in in, in in aviation because you know it's 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 it's, it's, it's romance, you know, you can fly like a bird and blah blah, and you have your own airline. It's cool. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's cool to it's, it's cool to have an airline. Uh, what 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 are the other reasons why why there are so many st startup projects in the world? People flying more, so they want to People people pe people flying more. Uh, if you look to any business, and we will speak about the trends, it's 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 really difficult to 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 find another business which is growing that fast rate like 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 airline business. It's easy to raise money. Easy. To raise money. Easy to raise money. Why do you think it's easy to raise money? I mean, if I want to, if I want to, to create, if, if I if I if I go to the market tomorrow and say I want to create a new airline, would it be easy to me to raise the money? I guess okay, not, not for me because I bankrupted twice already. Yeah? <laughs> I guess it's not new, but if you're a bit experienced, it's easy to raise money. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. also. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, in in last uh, I think two three years, uh, some some. Few airlines, which were not even even so successful, they they issued bonds and, uh, and 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 they raised some money. But they were not startups actually. They were they were they were well well established brands at least. It's Other a ideas? Sexy message for politicians from different cities and countries. Yes, yes. Uh, the governments, the municipalities, they are still really participating in this in this in this business, and many of the investments. Directly or indirectly coming from from uh, state uh, state institutions, I I think that's actually two 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 main reasons why aviation business and especially airline business is like over investment. I would I, I would call it like that. It's because of politicians and, and and the state money participating in that. And the other reason is is, is really cool to have an airline. Uh, so and the, when speaking about the airlines, yeah, I know everybody has. Own opinion about 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 the airline business. Do you actually? How many of you know that actually Donald Trump was running an airline, a real airline, not like uh, their own private jets? Uh, not not few, few hands again. But back in two thousand, back in nineteen eighty nine, he, he bought an airline and he rebranded it to Trump Shuttle. It, it, it was called like that. They were flying from New York to Boston and to Philadelphia, I believe, quite a short routes on 727s at that at that at that time, and they had like 27 aircraft at, at, at some point. At some point, but actually they collapsed in 1992, I believe, after three years or or, or so. And uh, it's actually not 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 store. It's not a story well uh, told widely, but. But even uh, even 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 the guy who is now Amer the president of the United States, he. He, he he took his personal per personal guarantees and he had, he got debt uh, like more than 100 million dollars which 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 was at that time big big bigger amount than it is today uh, to, to 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 cover after his airline went went went, went bust but uh, there was there are really a big number of of of, of, of businessmen who, who who thinks that they know how to run an airline and uh, how to how, how how to do business out of that, and there are many many examples when the when the businessmen coming from different industries, creating their own airline and 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 and, 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 and going out 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 of of, bus of this business. And uh, what is really a cool thing with 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 the airline business is that people are traveling more and more. And actually, when commercial aviation started around 100 years ago, so every 15 years the number of passengers worldwide doubles and it and it's and it's constantly for 100 years and uh, you know now most of most of us are feeling that that some some kind of crisis we don't know what crisis will hit us but 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 what uh, uh, economic downturn may 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 make it up and uh, it was proved that uh, in the long term air traffic is really resilient to external shocks so in all the history, in all 100 years, it was only uh, one time when the air traffic was going down for two years in a row. 
So that was back in 2001, after, 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 after 9-11. Then in 2002, air traffic was going down. And in 2003, it was going further down. But then it jumped, uh, jumped, jumped, jumped back. All the other crises, including uh, oil crisis, uh, financial crisis we had, it's usually it's one year when the when the when one year when the air traffic worldwide is going down, but then it recovers and, and then continues 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 to, to grow up, and uh, even if there is some serious belief that you know it was last it was the last time when when, when it, such thing could happen that air traffic doubles uh, in, a, in in a 15 years, but uh, all the all the all the all the all the forecasts all the future forecasts. <laughs> They show, they show, they show, they show really, really similar uh, things to happen in, in, in the next uh, 15 years. So why the traffic is growing? Uh, and why, is, why, 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 why it's growing, it's, it's, it's growing uh, uh, further? So traveling, air traveling, becoming easy, easier and easier. So the access to, 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 to become an airline passenger, is, it's, 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 it's easier. The, of course, the, the, the general economic trends uh, impacting uh, imp impacting that, and different regions, different countries has uh, have their their own uh, local market factors. So liberalization, which happened in Europe, in in, in a few waves, in a few waves, but uh, but 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 I I, I believe it, it happened in last uh, 15, 15, 15 years. When, 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 when European Union created Open Sky and when Lithuania and other Eastern European uh, countries joined the this, this sky in, back in 2000 and, uh, and, uh, and four, it, it, it allows airlines to create uh, new routes more and more easier. And uh, if United States, North America in general, Europe is quite liberal, but other parts of the world are still, is, is still not there. But we see the similar trend going, 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 go, going further and further into, into, into new countries and, and, and regions. Uh, uh, and, uh, another important thing is that there are more and more wealthy people in the world who can afford to travel. So, 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 if uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, the, the, the data collected by, 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 by Airbus. Who, in my, uh, who, who they are, in, in my opinion, one of, one, one, of, one of the issuing the one of the best uh, global market trends forecasts, as they counted that back in 2000 it was 2.9 billion people in the world who was who can be called middle class. Now it's 3.9 million in 2018, and in 2038 might be close to close to close to close close to six million. So people, people joining uh, the, 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 the middle class is, is really a driver to, 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 to get more, uh, to, get, to become a, uh, uh, airline, air, 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 airline passengers. Urbanization is another, is another trend happening worldwide, uh, which also affects and drives uh, air traffic, air traffic, air traffic for the run. So, so it's suspected that in 2038, about 60, 4% of the world population will live in the cities, when in, back in 2000 it was only 47%. So urbanization also drives that people are traveling more and more and more. Uh, so the forecast, at least at least provided by Airbus in this in this in this slide, not by number of passengers but number of RPKs created. RPK is uh, revenue uh, uh, billion b RPK in, in, in billions. So 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 how many seats of will f will be flown in uh, per, per 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 kilometer? It should it should it should it should it should double in 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 the next in next in next in next two decades. So, and then we are coming to to to, to our markets to 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 the, to the Baltics markets. And what's 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 the trend here? As most of you know, a last. I would say six, seven years were really good uh, for, for, for all the Baltic markets, especially, 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 especially Lithuanian one, which was growing in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a really, in, in a really, a really fast uh, growth rate. And uh, maybe, maybe some of you heard of, uh, that uh, uh, now ex-minister of, of, of transportation raised an idea that we should start, start to discuss if we need to build a new airport in Lithuania or, or, or shouldn't we? 
I, I I don't have any opinion. I'm, I don't have my personal opinion. What is what is what is what is, what is the right decision to do? But I I really think uh, that uh, that. Uh, it's really good that uh, discussion should be should be should, should be going on, because uh, if the global forecast is that the air traffic worldwide will grow uh, on on a growth rate of 4.3 percent per year, and if we if we, if we put that on uh, on the on the on the on the on the on the, on the Lithuania, for example, so we should expect that in 2038. We will have more than 14 million passengers in Lithuanian airports. So the question is, do we have an infrastructure to 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 to, to meet all these all, all all these passengers? So as of now, we have around seven million passengers in free Lithuanian airports, around six close to six in in, in Vilnius, around one million uh, in Kaunas, and a small fraction in, in, in Palanga. So. What will we do in what, what what is going to happen in 2038? So, what decisions should we make today to 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 to, to, to be able to serve those 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 those, those passengers? We can we can debate if four uh, percent growth is unrealistic, but in my opinion, it's really realistic, and, and uh, it, it it can be it can be even 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 go uh, uh, on a on a on a on a higher growth rate. So because. Be, uh, from 2008, even if we include crisis uh, of 2009, when after Flywell bankruptcy, the traffic was down by 30 few percent, even if you include the cr last financial crisis, the average growth of Lithuanian passenger traffic was 9 percent. So yeah, maybe 9 percent is, uh, is way too optimistic further to continue, but uh, something like 4 percent, I, I believe it's, it's, it's really realistic. So. The decisions: What should we do with 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 with, with the traffic to, to to double in the next 20 years? I believe it's, it's it's something we need at least to discuss because I just roughly made my calculations in my head. If the decision is that we need to build a new airport in Lithuania, so just my rough estimation is that we will spend around two million two years uh, discussing this in in in, 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 in taking a political decision. Then it will take another two years to run an international tender. You know who will build the airport and uh, how we will finance that. Then two, three years to 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 to, to create a project how this airport should look like, and then maybe four years uh, of actual construction work. So we have at least ten years. Uh, so, so 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 to run this pro so, so such a project. And if we look to any European example, so ten years from idea to to to, to airport in operation, it's it's not really pessimistic timeline it's even if, if even if i can if i i can call it like a uh, optimistic timeline to do that so so in my opinion it's really good that discussion is going on and uh, i i hope i hope that we will have enough political power and enough political will to, to to make the decision what's 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 our country strategy on 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 developing the airports and uh, I just wanted to put this slide as well on the on on on, on this screen uh, as well that there is serious. I, I think that is there are some myths related uh, related related to that. We, we, we in many cases we believe that uh, that the business traffic, the, the 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 people traveling for business, are the ones who are driving traffic up. In reality, it's half of the all our travelers are traveling for 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 vacation, in most cases. So it's not uh, necessarily beach vacation, but 90% uh, going, 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 going to the beach, uh, going, going to beach destinations, but uh, but also city breaks and, uh, and and all the stuff. So I don't believe that this all this all this all this picture will 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 will, will slow down uh, in in next 10 or or, or, or or 20 years. But if 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 something can stop the growth. Of aviation, if something can stop the growth of, of, of air, tra if air traffic, uh, who can be, who can, who, where this power to 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 to, to stop this can can come from? Uh, in my opinion, I'm not. I'm you know. I'm 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 just looking to aviation from the commercial side. In my opinion, that uh, there are not any. Technological, real technological progress happening in in, in 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 how we fly aircraft in last 50 years, I would say. 
because if you look in you know 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, you know jet aircraft came in and it was revolution. You know we started to fly three times, three times faster, and it was supersonic aircraft coming coming in. We, we it, it looked like we will start traveling another three times faster, but uh, uh, it, it appeared it's not commercially commercial commercially viable, but. Uh, now, I, I would say that, of, uh, uh, yes, we have new aircraft models coming in. They are becoming more efficient. They are becoming uh, more silent. They are, uh, they are, they are, they are uh, uh, producing less CO2. Uh, but, uh, but, 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 but uh, the real revolution, I don't believe, is, is, is happening. So where the airlines are putting all, these, uh, all, 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 all the efforts. And I believe... Uh, Looking for for the for the for the passenger ex experience, uh, it's actually only three three thing three ways or or three ways of thinking, where the where the airline business are looking for 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 innovation, and the most important I believe is increasing efficiency. We saw really really huge steps done in last twenty years I would say, which really increased efficiency of 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 of, 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 of the airlines. Uh, if we compare 1995 and 2018, so it's 20 plus 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 years. So each aircraft in the world uh, is now flying three hours per day more than it was flying in back in 1995. So uh, aircraft is really expensive thing to have. So 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 what really happened in last in last in last 20 years? that we use this expensive asset uh, more and more efficiently. Uh, the aircraft, they are becoming bigger. The average aircraft we, 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 we were jumping on is, 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 is becoming bigger every, every day. And I really think that uh, if we look around, uh, around us, even Vilnius is a really, really good example. I remember 10 years ago, in back in 2008, 2009, if you go to the Vil to Vilnius airport with, with your ticket, what aircraft you will be flying most likely? It's, re it's realistic that you will get Fokker 50 on Air Baltic, Saab 2000 on Flylal if the Flylal is still is still there, maybe 737-500 classic if you if you if you if you, if you, if you are lucky enough. Etihad from uh, Lot. Etihad from Lot, yeah, a good example. And now. 10 years past in 2018, 2019, if, we, if, if I want to fly somewhere from Vilnius, so what I will get most likely? Ryanair 737-800 with 189 seats, Airbus 321 or, uh, with, from, from Vizier, which has 230 seats. And if they will put 321 Neo, it's even 239 seats. Yeah. So, 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 so again, it's, it's, it's the trend really visible that uh, the, the, the aircraft uh, becoming the, the aircraft we, we we are using becoming bigger and bigger. In average calculation, it's 18 seats per 20 years on average on, on average flight. And I will talk a bit uh, maybe, maybe 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 later a bit. But in Liberize Open Skies World, in my opinion, it's not viable to do business anymore with turboprops or regional jets. And uh, and I think in next three or five years. Airbus 319 will be the regional jet of Europe, and uh, that's that's something what's happening in Lufthansa. They already started uh, saying that they will move all 319 fleets to, to to regional subsidiaries to serve to serve to serve to serve only 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 regional routes. And uh, the third uh, the third uh, important in, 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 in important aspect is that the aircraft has uh, better and better load factors. So for all the introvert people uh, like me. It's a really bad news that every time I, I, I need to fly an aircraft, in most cases I will see more and more passengers around me, because you know there is no better way to travel uh, intra Europe than to have free free uh, empty seats for yourself. But uh, in in most cases it's it, it's becoming completely unrealistic, and we see that if in, if an average load factor of 68 percent was normal. You can you can you can you know, make profits back in 1995 with such a load factor. Now the average load factor worldwide is 82 percent. 
And if we look to leading airlines like Ryanair or Vizier, they're announcing crazy load factors like 93% on average or 94% on average. So, but this is how the airline industry are gaining efficiencies. And if we put all these free, 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 free items together, that means we fly the aircraft more, we have bigger aircraft, and we, uh, and we, and, and we have higher load factors. So that means that the same, the same assets are now producing around 40% 40 uh, 40 more opportunities to, 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 to earn money uh, than it was, in was, it was in 20, 20, 20, 20 years before. Of course, we, what we really don't like uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a passengers that uh, I think all of, all, all of us here in this room, we are, we are, we are young enough and we, are, we, don't, we don't remember the times when traveling was really, really luxury and people dressed well to, to, to fly the aircraft like it was in the 1960s or, or 1970s. But yeah. Because because the airlines are looking so much for airlines are looking so much for for, for, for efficiencies, and uh, to get access to the new passengers, to, to, to the to the new people coming coming in into into to becoming customers of of, 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 of these business this businesses, so more and more it's becoming a bit, it's becoming a commodity, and on the revenue side, airlines at the same time also are doing, in my opinion, and when I'm, I'm actually. Sometimes I'm being invited to some business conferences on some companies which are completely non-aviation to tell something how the aviation works, and actually that's the slide I, 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 I used I, I use I show for them and they uh, sometimes say that whoa, that's actually a real picture. Uh, I don't I don't uh, it's, in these days it's not uh, GDPR compliant anymore because you can maybe recognize some 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 people here. Actually, this is the picture I made in Air Lithuania aircraft back in 2014. Flight from Vilnius to Berlin, 100% load factor, all seats, all 86 seats were sold out. And the number of the heads, you can see the price each passenger actually paid for the ticket. So you can see, you know, there are, there are some passengers who paid 28 euros and there are one seat which left empty, but, the, but this was fully paid ticket for 390 euros and passengers didn't show up. So one aircraft, people are getting almost the same product and they're paying completely different prices. Do you, you have a comment? No, no? Uh, all right. Uh, so what's, 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 what's if, we, if, if we look from that view, and I think it's really what, what, is, what, is, what, what is crazy about that is that the product is really, really similar for, for all of them, but uh, they're paying different prices, for, different price for that, and at the same time they are happy with it. What would happen if you know your your hairdresser would try to differentiate you as as, as airlines do? So you you are going to for the, for the haircut, but uh, because the hairdresser knows that you are. You are you are you can afford to pay 60 euros. You will pay 60 euros, but then another customer will come, and uh, he know she knows that uh, uh, he 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 cannot afford to pay 60 euros, and he asks for five euros. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's really really even uh, difficult to 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 imagine in, in other businesses, but I believe that the airline industry will be moving more and more toward this. Toward, toward this trend because the distribution tools, because the segmentation tools are so powerful and with the new, with the new technology, it's, it's, it's becoming easier and easier to implement. So airlines will try to take every, every, every cent you, you are willing to pay for f to, 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 fly, to fly the aircraft. Uh, when coming back uh, about possible powers, you know what can stop uh, the, the air traffic uh, growing in, in, in such a high numbers. How many of you heard about fly, Flixcam or flying shame? It would be in English. Flixcam is, is is a really popular hashtag in Sweden, and people are shaming each other because flying the aircraft. Why? Because of uh, of pollution and, and and climate change reasons. And uh, Flixcam is really, really popular, 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 popular hashtag now, 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 now in Sweden. You know, Greta going, going in the conferences worldwide, you know, and then spreading this idea 
and people and, and people people on follow, are following that. And what's actually happening? So, I actually took com and compiled this data myself and uh, and looked what's happening with the passenger traffic uh, in Sweden. So after growth uh, for ten years and then uh, quite quite healthy growth. Uh, this year, the traffic is going down almost by 10%. The fixed camp started uh, something like uh, middle of, 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 of last year, middle of 2018. So, uh, it's, but it's still really difficult to, to, to guess what is the real effect of real, uh, just, you know, social networks shaming of, of, of each other. And what's 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 the impact of another thing? What actually was done by 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 the politicians in Sweden, and I believe this is the trend. What will happen to, at least throughout all the Western countries and especially Europe? It's taxation. With such a mood in the in the society, society and uh, so 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 many you know things and so many talks happening uh, about about the climate change. It's now really easy to, for the governments to introduce new taxes for, 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 for aviation. And actually what was done in Sweden? Uh, uh, in Sweden, they introduced aviation tax, which is uh, minimum, minimum tax is six euros per passenger, and it can go up to 39 euros per passenger if you fly long haul on a, on a, on a, on a business on a business class it was introduced from April 2018 so I believe it took some time to, 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 to adopt especially for the airlines how to react to the new tax so we cannot say that all this downturn in Sweden is only of, 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 of public shaming of, 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 of flyers but I believe that is combined together with, with the new tax introduced back in 2000, 2018. Now the Angela Merkel government, they are pushing a new tax to, to double the aviation tax in Germany starting next year. Now they have around seven euros, I think, for intra-European flights and they want to double that. So, 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 so it will be another seven euros for each ticket sold, 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 sold on the airlines. Uh, in Europe, uh, United Kingdom was the first country which really introduced uh, 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 air passenger duty uh, widely. And I think they introduced like 12 years ago or, or so. And uh, this, 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 uh, this, this tax was raised step by step, usually by, by, by labor, uh, labor, labor government. Because at that, at that point, it was, you know, uh, it was uh, in government used an argument that air passenger tax is actually tax for the rich people. You know, only rich people can fly, so they can they can they can they can take pay for that. But now I think uh, everything everything the yeah uh, went in a different way, and I believe that the climate change will be will be will be will be the reason why the governments will take steps to to introduce additional aviation taxes. I know something is happening in Netherlands and France as well. So so so. I believe that's something we will we will we will we will uh, head to in Europe for 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 next for for, for next years, and uh, I think that at least for short term it can in impact impact in impact the, the the airline business, because uh, especially for the low cost airlines when the fares are so low these days, you know average fare for Ryanair flight is forty euros. So if there is 12 euros tax additionally, so so you know ticket price rise by 25%. So it really have some 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 impact for 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 for, for the demand. I think another re, uh, another important point is the, uh, which may affect the growth of 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 of, uh, of uh, air passenger traffic worldwide is the lack of capacity, especially in the large airports. And uh, in my opinion, it's really a problem in Europe, where uh, where where many European air, uh, airports are really far behind to develop the infrastructure as fast as this it is, uh, as, as demand is going. So, you know, uh, in UK, uh, in UK they haven't built any new runway in 60 years, 
And, and the problem is mainly not lack of finances. It's, it's, really to, it's really easy to create a business case, you know, to build a third run runway in, in, in Heathrow Airport or second runway in Gatwick Airport. But there are some other political reasons. Uh, you know, it's so, so, so difficult to, 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 to get all the approvals and, 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 and stuff. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you can see other parts of the world like, like, like Istanbul or, or, or Beijing or, 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 or Middle East or other, other Chinese airports where they are really uh, developing infrastructure in really, 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 really fast, fast rates. But I believe it may be a problem in, 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 uh, in, in, in Europe. If, if I want to start a new airline in Europe or even if I want to start a new airline in, 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 in Lithuania, for example, one of the key problems I would, I, 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 I would hit would be to get good slots at major airports. Because, and it, was, it, 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 it happened really, really fast. When I was in, 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 in uh, Air Lithuania and we started in 2013, 2014, we got slots in Amsterdam, we got slots in Paris, we got slots in Munich, we got slots in Berlin. Okay, we have to adapt, adapt some, some, some schedules at that point, but in 2019, 2020, it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not a case. It's not a case anymore. And uh, when you look to the corporate presentations of CZJet, what 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 they are told, telling investors, you know, they 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 are they are running on quite low margins, comparing to Ryanair or comparing to to to, to Wizier. So they need to put some explanations why they are good at, uh, at their business for the investors. So what they are uh, what they are saying to the investors, uh, the message is that it's they are so strong and they, their, their, uh, their foot are so strong in the main airports that in the long term, nobody can compete with them because nobody can you know, create the same routes they, 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 they are flying if, if, if even if somebody sees the opportunity. And uh, okay, for last half year, for last year, Ryanair, uh, the, the, largest, uh, the largest airline in Europe, they have another internal problems. But what they did in last, uh, I would say, from 2016 to 2018, in many cases, they understand that they need to jump, to, to jump into the main airports because it's the last chance to, to, for them to, 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 to jump in. So they started to fly from, from Frankfurt airport, which was unbelievable 10 years ago that Ryanair will start from, 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 uh, to fly from Frankfurt at, 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 at some point. But I think it's it will become bigger and bigger problem for 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 aviation to grow to grow to grow to grow fast especially in europe with lack of infrastructure and slots uh, being not available for the for the for the for the for the airlines to uh, to get uh, another trend which is i think it's really bad news for the passengers but what's what really will happen in, in, in Europe in, in next years uh, is consolidation. In my opinion, it's, it's already overdue. Uh, we still have too many airlines. It's just such a difficult business uh, uh, around, around, around Europe. Usually what happens in the United States after some time, it happens in Europe. So United States went through this all the all the all the all the all the consolidation process, and uh, at current point we have only few airlines left in, 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 in United States. So I would say we have this big four: Delta, United, uh, American, and Southwest, and we have few small ones, uh, more more focused to regional regional operations like JetBlue, or or Frontier, or, or Alaska Airlines. In, 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 in Europe, uh, I, think, uh, uh, I think the consolidation will, will, will further go on. And actually, there are two ways to reduce the number of airlines in operation. One is actually going out of business. And that's really what's, 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 what's happening uh, around now. But I believe, especially if the, if the, if the, if the economic uh, downturn will come up, we, might, we may hear more and more announcements that one airline agreed to buy another airline on, or two airlines decide, decide, decided to merge to, 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 to one company. This is really, really personal opinion, but in my opinion, there are quite a few obvious targets for acquisitions or for, 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 for mergers in Europe. Uh, airlines like Finnair or Aegean or the names or SIS maybe as well, 
the airlines which are still state-owned or heavily state-owned, which are quite good in the business and have a good market presence in specific markets, they might be a really good target uh, for, 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 for acquisitions. And what's happened in, in the last 10 years, we see that uh, British Airways or International Airlines Group, they first acquired Iberia in Spain, then, then now they acquired, uh, then, then they acquired the Vueling in, in Spain. Last purchase for them was Aer Lingus, I believe, in, 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 in Ireland. So I believe such a consolidation might, might, might happen. Uh, the low-cost airlines, I believe, also might be uh, a good takeover targets for some, some, some other airlines. Ryanair and EasyJet might be too big uh, for, 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 for some air, big airlines group to, to acquire, but Wizzair might be a potential target even for Lufthansa or British Airways, but just, 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 just my personal opinion. Uh, Alitalia, they are looking for, for, for takeover. They, they want somebody would buy them for, I don't know, 20 years, 25 years. They bankrupted four times. <laughs> they, they, but they are still flying and still nobody wants, nobody is interested in that. And uh, it's even difficult to predict what, 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 what will happen to, with them. Air Baltic, is, are they a good, a good takeover target? We hear time to time that some, uh, that government in, in, in Latvia tried to privatize Air Baltic, then they changed the mind again and uh, <coughs> stuff and stuff. In my personal opinion, they are just a bit too small. And uh, even if they are well run the airline, if they are quite efficient the airline, but if you buy Air Baltic, what, what, what you will get? You know, good market share where? In Latvia? I mean, who cares about Latvia? Generally looking, you know, from, 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 from Lufthansa perspective or, or Delta or, 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 or British Airways. That's, 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 that's really my opinion. But I really think what will happen in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the next few years that we will, we will see more consolidation throughout the Europe. So the good way to consolidate is to, 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 to merge uh, some uh, few airlines. But if, if the mergers will be unsuccessful, we can see you know, more and more airlines going out of business. And uh, I, really, I really saw this, some uh, analysis made by IATA. I think they announced just a week or, or so the report. And, uh, and I just quickly read it throughout today that there are so many airlines which which look successful from the from the from the branding and how they are run, but their mar the profit margins are around zero to one percent. So so so, if any economic downturn, if your fuel spike or any I don't know terrorism attack or any political 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 problem appears, so 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 they might be might be might be a problem for that. Low cost long haul. It was really a hot topic. I think two years ago. You know, if you go to any aviation conference. Every second, every second, every second presentation you see is about long haul low cost. That's kind of new thing and the, and the new trend happening. But I, uh, in my opinion, so far, what, what, what uh, low, long haul low cost uh, showed us that actually the demand to fly cheaply long haul is there. But you know, I think it's obvious in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, it was clear even before, before, more, before most of the startups started but how to find a really good business model out of flying long haul long cost i think the answer is not 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 found yet so will you know primera air and wow air already went bust uh norwegian is on the on the on the on the verge of, 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 of and trying trying to survive but what will but but what will happen what will have what what will what, what will further happen and uh, and the maybe the, the the last trend I have about what 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 is happening, especially in European airline airline business, and here I comes here I come to my 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 heavy statement which I made in back in 2012, that everybody every airline will be a low cost airline. So that's what's 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 really happening, and I think only the airlines which were able to transform themselves to low cost airlines still 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 remain to the business and uh, in in ch aviation when we are running an airline database where we we have a specific field to, to describe the business model of of, of 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 each airline and it's becoming more and more difficult to say which airline belongs to legacy airlines group which airline belongs to low-cost airline group 
and uh, now the Ryanair created a new, a new, a new, a new buzzword that because everybody is low cost these days, so they call themselves ultra low cost airlines. But what's happening around? I, I believe that all these business models are evolving to some kind of hybrid models that more and more airlines are taking, 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 take, 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 taking different uh, aspects from 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 this different different airline models. So if you look to the legacy airlines, what 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 they are doing, they're putting more seats on the aircraft. So the new Airbus 320 Neo and Lufthansa has more has the same number of seats as Vizier. So they know they they, they understood that uh, that uh, that that the, the efficiency is more important to it, uh, than the passenger the passenger comfort. Airlines are moving to larger and larger aircraft because is the only way them to compete with low cost airlines. I think it's a really iconic example is uh, I think a few months ago, Austrian Airlines, they announced that they will replace their aging Dash Q400 fleet because Dash Q400 is too, uh, a too old aircraft for them. And they will replace this aircraft with Airbus 320. It's the aircraft which is larger more than twice than, 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 than Dash. But because of so many low-cost competition came in into, into, into Vienna Airport, Lauda, EasyJet, Vizier, and, and stuff, they see that's, 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 the only, that's the only way for them to compete. So I really see that the legacy airlines are moving towards larger and larger aircraft. And then the regional aircraft and turboprop aircraft, they, they, they fly less. Legacy airlines started to utilize the assets more. So Ryanair showed the example how to fly the aircraft starting 5 a.m. and then land the last flight at 1 a.m. So, so, so we'll see airline, legacy airlines doing the same these days. Uh, the baggage fees. Is there any airline in, in, in Europe still not having fare without baggage? I actually don't know. Turkish? If they are European airline, then maybe. But I'm not sure if they have hand, hand, hands luggage only fear. But if you look Lufthansa, SAS, Finnair, British Airways, e e every airline has, uh, has the basic fear comes without, 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 without luggage. Uh, buy on board concept being, being rolled out more and more. So, so, so British Airways, they don't have any, they're not providing still water for free. So, 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 so everything you need to, 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 to buy on board. Um, Again, looking to, 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 to higher yield uh, passengers, the airlines are investing and, and, and trying to get more money for who, who can afford that, introducing the premium economy. But that's actually the same what, 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 what low cost airlines do. If we see the same Norwegian, you know, they, they fly long haul aircraft, including they call it, I think, premium class or, or so. So it's something between, 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 between economy and, 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 and a business class. And there, are, and there are a few airlines which started offering business class seats, like Vueling. Now they are purely low cost airline, but now, now they are offering, 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 offering business class seats. More and more low cost airlines, they're experimenting with the, with, the, with the connecting flights. I don't think there are so many success in it. <coughs> Ryanair announced heavily, I think two years ago, that they will, they will, they will create hubs and they will allow passengers to connect on their flights legally, uh, on, on, on a guaranteed connections, but they roll, they roll out only 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 a few bases where, where, where they do that. And as far as I know, that they, they mainly were hit by IT problem. They don't find any an, an acceptable IT solution how to manage all the all the all the all the all the connecting flights flows. But we see that low cost airlines are are are, are going into it. So. That was only legacy airlines business, you know, 10 years ago or 15 years, 15 years ago. Low-cost airlines are going more and more to, the ma to, to, to major airports. So Vizier, they, now they have really large base in, in Vienna, Ryanair flying from Frankfurt, Ryanair flying from, from, from Amsterdam. 10 or 15 years ago, it was, it was nonsense, would say that, you know, that one day Ryanair will fly, fly, fly from uh, uh, Frankfurt. Uh, the distribution, uh, another thing where airlines are becoming more and more hybrid. So on one hand, we have Ryanair who are distributing their, their tickets through the GDSs. It was again not, not, not the case 10 years ago. 
And at the same time, Lufthansa is introducing a GDS fee of 17 euros. So they want to avoid they want they want to avoid travel agents to use to use to use to use to use GDS. So things are becoming more and more complicated. But at the same time, all the all the business models are 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 are, are, are evolving at the same time. So what's what's the ultra low cost airlines about? So low cost airlines trying to keep costs down. What they are doing, they are going to even larger aircraft. So it was crazy to see, you know, seven and you know, 189 seats aircraft in 2006 or 2007 flying between Kaunas and Bremen, or, 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 or such a thin routes. But now we see that Vizier is moving. They want uh, they want to go more and more with Airbus 321's Neo, which will have 239 seats to fill. So, 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 just, just, just to keep, to keep, to keep, to keep unit, 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 unit costs down, and utilita utilization is still, is still, is still, is still, is still hot, hot, hot topic, and uh, we see fly airlines flying more and more and more. So, for the network planning perspective, and uh, we will, we will, we will, we will go further with, with, with the question I, I put it on, on, on a slide. Uh, more and more routes are being created direct. So it's, it's, it's uh, less and less we need to fly via, 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 via different hubs to reach some, some, some destinations. And the number of new city pairs being connected last year, it's, it's really, really booming. And where it's booming, and actually we are one part of it, is actually five, 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 five main. Uh, five my main, uh, let's say, uh, places in the in the world. One 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 area is actually domestic China market. So there are so many cities in 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 in, in China, uh, which have like uh, one million population or, or or more, and all of these cities now are being connected directly with 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 the direct flights, not necessary, not not needed anymore to use Beijing or Shanghai or. Or, or, or other hub. When in in CH Aviation, we are, when we will update our 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 schedules each Sunday, in some cases we get notification like China Southern Airlines opened 25, 250 new routes last week, and all are domestic in China. So they found so many new city pairs to connect to connect directly. Uh, Africa to Europe is something uh, is, is, is something happening happening as well. Because Africa is close to Europe, we see more and more low-cost charter airlines going into Morocco, Tunisia, and now Egypt, 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 Egypt came back as well. Transatlantic, even nobody showed a viable business model how to fly low-cost uh, flights uh, throughout, uh, throughout, throughout, uh, throughout the ocean. But we see more and more direct city, 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 city peers being connected. So we see that uh, uh, airports from Ireland or from airports from from UK being to connected to second tier cities in the United States. Short haul within Europe, and I believe our market is really again a good a good a good example to see what's 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 happening. Some of those routes are not successful. Some of the of, of, of these routes are being closed after 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 a few years, but. We see especially low-cost airlines opening routes like, I don't know, from, 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 from Vilnius to Madrid. Okay, now they, they're closing that one, but from Vilnius to Athens or, 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 or Kaunas to Naples and, uh, and, uh, and different. So we see that, uh, that, uh, that more and more city pairs are being, 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 being connected directly. And long-haul LCC as well. So they, 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 they try to avoid hubs, they try to avoid big hubs. So, so, so they are looking for the city pairs which, 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 which are, 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 are uh, connected directly. Yes. Yes. As for me, it sounds to me sometimes it's, there is no ability to upgrade the new to big cities. Yes, and at the same time, in order to receive new customers, the companies are going to fly from village to village. Because mm -hmm. It's like a slogan, it's there, everybody now can fly. Yeah, that's why it's, uh, as for me, it's a future to travel from all the small cities, mm -hmm. even small cities. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I, I, I really think that, uh, you know, uh, the direct, direct connections, it generates traffic. 
you know, if we look at the statistics, for example, just take a crazy example, you know, flight from between Vilnius and Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia. If you look at the statistics, how many passengers are flying now? I think we will, f I, I don't know, but I think we will find out that it's like, you know, seven passengers a week or 10 passengers a week, you know? But if any crazy airline would open that route, that route direct, how many passengers they will have? Yeah. I mean, they will not have, you know, full aircraft, you know, to, to, to fill, then they will not make profit out of it, but they will have, I don't know, five, type, five, five times, 10 times more than the current, the, the, the current demand. And this, and, this, and these direct connections, you know, they just allow, allow, allow people to travel. You know, uh, I just, I will speak about the idea of this, of, of this slide here. But let's say, you know, flights from Turku to Kaunas, between Turku and Kaunas. I actually took this, this flight personally this, 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 this summer. You know, Turku is a, is a relatively small uh, city in Finland, in European, in, in European terms. And they have like, I think it's, they have only like six flights out of Turku to fly directly. You know, when people see that they are able to fly to Lithuania, to Kaunas, what they are doing, they just, you know, booking and they, 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 they book and fly because they don't have so, 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 so many options to fly to. So I think it's, it's, it's a really good point there. Uh, all airports or most airports, which are not overcrowded, but they are eager for, 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 tra for traffic, they are trying different tools to help airlines to open the new routes. And we hear, you know, a lot of incentives that, that, that specific airport or specific, you know, tourism authority gave some money to the airline or put some money to marketing or how they call to, how to, call to do that. And uh, these supports are really helpful for, for the airlines. They really open the new routes. In my opinion, and I maybe not uh, will go deep into it because of, because of time constraints we have, uh, the current limitations of these programs, it helps to create niche routes, uh, low frequency, because then if you, if you give an airline 300,000 euros or 400,000 euros, it matters, uh, it matters a bit. So I believe such a routes like Kaunas to Turku, because it was, I know Kaunas city municipality invested some money into, into, into opening of this route or Palanga to Dortmund, where, where, where I think seven municipalities uh, put some money into in the opening in this direction. I think it really helped to open, to open, to open, to open, to open those routes. But I think uh, just, just support can be helpful, you know, to open the flight, flight between Vilnius and New York, because at one point, you know, you, know, you need to give an airline, you know, uh, tens of million euros to support that route, and there are no uh, viable mechanisms to do, to do that. But uh, I think uh, what Lithuania created, uh, 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 you know, this, the flights now we have between Vilnius and London City. So uh, somehow Lithuanian government, and, uh, and it's really a huge applause to them, they, they convinced uh, European Union that this is a PSO route. PSO means public service obligation. It used to be a mechanism only to support routes where you know government should create kind of connectivity because it's necessary for so for some people to reach to reach to reach home or to reach to reach capital and this mechanism it used to be only used estonians use that because they have two flight they have flights to kardlas island i believe population of 3000 people and there are no other option in winter to to to, to get into mainland so 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 they were allowed to subsidize that, but somehow Lithuanian, Lithuanian, Lithuanian governmental institutions, they convinced European Union that Vilnius to London is so, so PSO route. And uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing for the for, for short de development, but in the long term, I believe it might be a Pandora box because uh, now, now, now every airline will, 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 will ask airports to, 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 to subsidize routes through, 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 through this mechanism. And if this continues and we will subsidize more and more routes, it will just destroy the, 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 the competition and current economically, economically, economically viable routes. Uh, with the trend that, with the trend of consolidation and the trend of uh, uh, larger and larger aircraft, I think what's, what, what the problem will hit some European airports, that some airports may become 
too small, their market too small for, for, for low cost airlines and they, not, they, they will not have any other option uh, to, attract, to attract other airlines. I was actually accidentally in Ljubljana last week and you know Adria Airways bankrupted last week and uh, you know they have 56% market share in Ljubljana airport and they went out of business. So what's your expectation? What will happen next? That, you know, new airlines will, go, will, will, will jump in, low cost airlines will, will, will jump into Ljubljana airport. So what happened uh, in Ljubljana actually? Uh, Adria Airways with 56% market share, they went out of business. And Vizier, I think the third airline uh, by market share in Ljubljana, they are going out of this market as well at the end of, in the, in the end of October. They actually made the decision while well, Adria was still al alive, but they said that we will not change our decision and that there is no market for us. It's just the catchment area of, 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 of Ljubljana city is too small to fill 239 seats, seats aircraft. And they were losing money with, with CRJ aircraft, uh, with the small aircraft. So the airline is losing money with the small aircraft, but none of the airlines wants to fly to with the, with the, the large aircraft. So I think Palanga Airport is really lucky they were able to, to, to show the case that they are attractive to, 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 to low-cost airlines because uh, and our Ryanair and Vizier both are flying from, 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 from Palanga. Because if, if, if not the case, I would really adopt what would be the future if, if, if for, for, for Palanga Airport in longer term, like four years or, or, or five years. All right. Uh, should we look to the list of you submitted of the possible routes from, 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 from Vilnius? Or should they take questions first? Actually, this is the T-shirt uh, produced uh, by Tallinn Airport in one airline and airports conference. And there are listed most popular excuses by the airlines to tell airports why we are, will not fly to your airport. So they collected most popular, popular excuses. So, okay, one excuse is that you are on the list, so we will fly some time, go away. Uh, other excuse is you are too expensive. Third excuse is where is Estonia? Fourth excuse is uh, flight sector too long. So our aircraft are not able to reach, to reach, to reach, to reach, to reach Thailand. Uh, let's keep in touch. Another, another excuse, we just go away. We are restructuring. You know, these days, I don't know any other European airlines which are being in restructuring mode, but if we took like four or five years back, there were a few airlines which were in restructuring mode, including Air Baltic and lot Polish airlines. They were banned for opening, for opening, for opening new routes. So it's a good excuse. We are restructuring, so we'll not open any new, 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 new routes. We have a different strategy. Send more data. It's a really, really popular excuse. Or no aircraft available. And that's another one, small catchment area. So it's 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 just to 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 end up my presentation with some 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 kind of fun, and if I if we look now for the for the for the for the for the destinations you submitted to to open directly from Vilnius, we could see which excuse we could use to 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 say no for one destination or another. But maybe I can I can I can take some questions out of out of my presentation or just not out of this presentation, just to, to share your thoughts on, 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 on specific trends or I actually have a question. Yeah. You mentioned that uh uh Ramasur uh Rokas Masur he wants an airport. But we actually have a full airport. So you know it's civil airport. Mm -hmm. We should forget that it's civil. Mm -hmm. Do you think we ever start flying civil airplanes from there again? because of that traffic in Switzerland and that this could be a potential competitor to Riga, which a number of Chile mm -hmm. people from Chile flying from Riga and flying from mm -hmm. Olmas. Yeah, I'm sure I'm from Chile personally, so 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 I can be subjective from that. But uh, realistically thinking, you know, is it viable to open one or two routes from 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 Chile? I think possibly I mean, you can, you can, you can, you can maybe, you know, low cost airline can fly it's to Stansted 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 or, 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 or Oslo or whatever, because, you know, there are 10 flights a day, you know, five, ten flight, five flights a day from Vilnius, four flights a day from Kaunas, 
uh, five flights a week from uh, from 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 Palanga and uh, uh, I don't know six flights a day from Riga. So could three flights per week from from Cholet to to to, to London Sunset would work? Yes, maybe, but I don't think that in the long term it solves. It, it, it uh, in the long term is is, is there any solution for Lithuanian airport system. I don't think so. I mean, we would have another one small airport, and uh, small airports. I mean, it's really difficult uh, to, to to have them commercial commercially viable. I know that uh, even with with some traffic, uh, Palanga Airport, if it takes standalone as a as, as a business, it's difficult to, to 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 make them them profitable because you know you need to clean to clean to clean runways in winter to de ice the aircraft and do all all, all 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 this kind of stuff. And when you just have two free flights a day, it's 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 it's, it's really difficult to issue invoices for somebody to, for somebody to pay for that so i think it, there is possibility you know uh, but uh, but but i don't think it would change something you know drastically drastically can 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 Chile compete compete with riga i think no i mean no i mean they can have one route or another route but 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 is it a real competition i i i i really don't think so because because all the people all people from Riga they will have better options just 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 just, just around the corner. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, airline passengers are <coughs> very different in each country, uh, meaning that uh, passengers in Germany are very uh, are very well educated. They know their rights. And passengers, for example, in Latvia, they do not. So do airlines evaluate? the possible expenses on compensations for delayed or cancelled flights when they are planning uh, new routes? Mm. I, I have some data actually that the, the, the passenger educating education in this in this in this in this side of passenger compensation uh, is different uh, market by market. But I, th I really think it's really short term thing. You know, in the in the in the in the in the, in the long in the long term, you know, it's 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 a matter of two three years that uh, that uh, that you know people will become become educated. As far as I know, for example, in Estonia, the compliant rate on EU EU two six one compensation is ninety eight percent or so, and it's highest in Europe. So 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 this will will will, will happen in Lithuania or, or Latvia as well, and uh, and uh, and uh, and there are. Many companies promoting that rights, especially especially the private ones who who who, who has money, you know, to, to to advertise that. So, if Skycop, you know, is advertising that they can help for the for the for the passengers, so they are of course first thing what they do, they help their own business, but at the same time they help really for the education of the of the of the of, of the of the of the passengers. So I really think it's it's, it's a short term that these differences are short term thing. And uh, and but in general, EU 261's compensation, I think it's some 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 other cost which hit the airlines uh, badly. I mean, looking from the from the from the airline perspective in the, in 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 in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a last few years. So so I don't think uh, any airline can open a new route just because they know that in this in this in this market people are not complaining that much. But uh, but this is, is it inf uh, influencing the business? I I, I believe so, and I think. Uh, this EU 261 compensations it's, it, it conflicts in many cases with uh, with the airline wish to to have more utilization because more you fly more you have delayed flights and the more you risk you are taking with 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 with, with more tests with the tight schedules uh, so 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 uh, I know that in the in the in the airline headquarters there are more and more analysis being done you know how to forecast exactly how 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 much we will need to spend on on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a passenger compensation because 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 I think it's just a matter of of, of, of years or even months that or that we will reach like hundred percent of complaint ratio or all around all around all around Europe unless the the, the, the this this uh, this uh, regulation will change because. I know that there are some some project in European Parliament to change that regulation. Yeah. <coughs> As you said, uh, people who take flights are uh, increasing the whole world. Uh, you said that uh, in the Ukraine you are discussing if you should uh, build, a, build another airport. Uh, isn't it better to make the 
actual or current uh, airport diggers? Because mm -hmm. when I arrived in Guinea, they expected like a bigger mm -hmm. Well, I, I said in the beginning that I don't have my personal, strong personal opinion that there is one, one decision is better than the other one because I think it's a difficult decision and we should really put a lot of effort to do a right analysis what, what should, which, which we should do with. I think it's really beneficial and it's our competitive advantage developing city break tourism and even business conference tourism to have an airport just uh, five kilometers from the, from the, from the city, center, city center of Vilnius. Yes, there are some problems to, with the land around it. There are noise issues. Even, 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 even the aircraft are becoming more and more silent than it was 40 years ago, but there are more and more aircraft landings. So, so there are some issues with, 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 with developing, uh, developing the airport in, 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 in the city. At the same time, you know, uh, the geography of, 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 of Lithuania works like that, that Vilnius is so much east in the country, and we still have uh, a lot of people living in Kaunas, Klepa, Dašiaulė, Panevežys, and, and other cities which are qu still quite, quite, quite large enough, you know, to, to, to be served somehow. So, so I, I really don't think it's, it's, it's an easy answer. And I really congratulate that this discussion, discussion is happening. I, I, really, I, I really believe that it will be enough political will to make you know, any decision, whatever it is, you know, and to, 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 make it, to, make it, to make it in the right way. You mentioned that there, mm -hmm. there is a big trend of uh, liberalization of uh, new routes. Mm -hmm. uh, where is it happening now, nowadays? Like Besides domestic, uh, domestic market. Mm -hmm. uh, it's happening in Southeast Asia, and we can see, let's say, AirAsia uh, as, as an airline, they are benefiting, benefit, benefiting uh, a lot of that. Uh, it's not a really fast process, I would say, but we, I, I can see that in many countries, these limits for the opening new routes are just being, you know, reduced step by step by step, step by step. Let's take. Take for example India's example. In India, if you want to get permit to fly internationally from India, you have to have an airline which has at least five years of experience, and you have at least twenty aircraft. So what 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 happens? So if you want to create a startup in India, which is really a fast growing market, you need to spend five years, you know, flying only domestically be, be, be before you get permits to 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 to, to fly internationally. So and I heard that they are now. Uh, looking forward to reduce this limit to two years or, 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 or so. So we just small example of liberalization happening, but I think in many countries we can we can we can we can we can we can see more and more uh, examples what what is is being done step by step. We see that uh, there are a few countries joining European single sky uh, mode. So Georgia is part now of, of, of European open sky. So. If you are running a German airline, you can open the route easily from 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 Vilnius to Georgia. Ukraine is the same, so Ryanair can now fly to 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 to, to, to Ukraine. So uh, I think ten years ago or so, Morocco joined European single sky. So at some point, that I believe maybe you know maybe if if if, if I don't know Bel 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 Belarus will be the next country to, to join that. So it's a risk actually I think for for for, for Vilnius airport getting 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 passengers from from from. The Russian side, or, or or whatever it happens. So, I think it's not you know like radical changes like liberalization in the United States in the United States, which happening overnight in 1970 something. But I think there are small steps being done in in, in many 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 countries, and uh, I see that more and more governments are seeing benefits out of it, and uh, they will they will they will do similar 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 actions further on. I know in Africa some 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 some, some similar stuff are, are, are being done that that the, that uh, airlines are are, are opening uh, are, and opening their skies more and more uh, countries are opening the airports more and more so it's it's it's, it's difficult you know to see a boom uh, somewhere in the in the world but I think it's it's, it's just it's just happening step by step. I saw the hand here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Your mentioned that. Uh, some governments recently have introduced uh, taxes, new taxes, yeah. like ecology-related taxes. And, I mean, doesn't it create unfair competition? For example, 
in Sweden, one company is subject to the taxes in Italy or in Lithuania. No, and they apply the same rules. So naturally, mm -hmm. uh, how it will be regulated? Uh, Usually. Usually, usually what they do, they introduce tax for any, any passenger leaving specific country or specific airport. So whatever airline flies in Sweden, they need to pay tax on departing, on departing any, any, any passenger. But you are right in terms of neighboring, neighboring countries. So usually what's, 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 what's happening, let's say if, you are, if, if I live in Malmo now, you know, I just cross the bridge and fly from Copenhagen where there is no tax and the, theoretically the tickets are cheaper up from, from there. So it was the case, I think, like 10 years ago, Netherlands introduced such a tax, but because they lost so many passengers driving out to German and uh, Belgium airports, so they, they, they took it out after one year, I believe. But I think because of this political trend and all this uh, mood in, in society about the climate change, I would say it's more likely that if one country introduces that and other countries will follow so so and i'm i'm really you know from from as as as, uh, as aviation geek i'm a bit maybe you know i usually and uh, i'm a aviation geek and liberal so so i'm against taxes and i want to, you know uh, uh airline tickets would be cheaper but uh, but i i think that it might be that you know government will double the tax so now the netherlands really have the chance to follow them and introduce the tax as well if the netherlands introduce then it's easy to introduce that in belgium because belgian belgians will know that you know nobody will go 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 to neighboring 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 countries and with this with this with this with this you know all the talks about the climate change it's even easier to sell the idea of new tax because you know government can say you know we are we are we are Keeping keeping environment clean by introducing new tax, and we believe you know people will take trains more. So probably in very very long perspective, I tell me may, may make it mandatory for all countries or something like that. Uh, I don't I don't think uh, IKEA will do. I don't know. You know, in twenty years anything can happen, but. Uh, but I think what really can happen, I think, uh, and then there are talks around that to do in, in first introduce European wide, uh, European Union wide tax. So that would be yeah, that would be the case. You know, I'm I'm personally I don't think, for example, a country like Lithuania would introduce such a tax unilater unilaterally. But I think if, if if European Union would say you know we need to introduce everywhere, Lithuania would easily support that. That's because because I think. In Lithuania, it just would be too difficult for the politicians to sell the need of this tax because, you know, we don't have national airlines, we are losing competition to Riga already, and then again, a new tax, and then so I don't, I don't think it will happen unilaterally, but this can happen European, European wide. So, 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 so if European Union will decide that every airline passenger needs to pay, you know, 10 euros for the contribution to, 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 to CO2, CO2 uh, Reductions, so this 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 will happen, right? Do you know there are any talks of unifying the space control? You know that you control the whole European Union airspace from one or two places. I'm really not really good. I'm not really into it actually. I know that there are some talks, but I don't know how how far they are. They're merging some 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 some. Mm -hmm. Some you know, Lithuania and Poland have some common, 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 common regimes. So, but I'm, I'm really, I don't want to say something stupid because I, I really don't, don't know much about that. Yeah. Why do you think low, low cost, long haul doesn't work? Well, uh, I think, okay, uh, I, I, I maybe, maybe, maybe speak more about this. You know, if you, if you, if you start thinking about the low cost, you short haul revolution. What they started to do, so they put it larger aircraft. Yeah, uh, they reduced the service, they unbundled, unbundled all the all the all the all, all the fees, they created efficiencies by flying aircraft more. Uh, what they did, what else they did? Uh, yeah, they, they they bought uh, aircraft in huge bundles, like 200, 200 uh, aircraft order or or or, or, or so. So. I think all these items in long haul, it doesn't give such a, such, such a big effect because uh, you cannot increase utilization on the long haul aircraft or, or, the long, or, on the long, or, or you can increase just really, really marginally. 
You know, if you fly short haul aircraft, you fly two hour flights per day. And if you reduce your ground time to from one hour to 30 minutes, you can, you know, put two flights more. But if you fly 12 hour flight, you know, if you reduce by half an hour, you know, there is no big efficiency, 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 efficiency here. To put more seats into the aircraft, I think legacy airlines already did that in economy class. I mean, maybe you can still do something here, but it's really, really marginal, 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 marginal as well. Uh, people don't like unbundling that much in long haul than it is in short haul. Because in short haul, you can think, okay, maybe I don't need a bag. I just take my, you know, my, you know, you know, small, 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 small item with me. I will not need food. I will not need water because it's two hour flights. I just jump on the aircraft, fly and, and, and go out. In long haul, you know, if you need to spend 12, air, 12 hours in the aircraft, so you still need water and food. So, you know, airline can sell that for you, but you still will calculate into your price in your, in your head that you will need to, 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 to buy it because you cannot spend 12 hours without, without, without the food. So there are some, you know, some possible savings, but I think there are two things here. One thing is that these savings, especially the ones who are known in the market now, are so, 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 so marginal. Another thing I think uh, what's, what's, what's in here is that uh, legacy airlines, because they saw what happened in the short haul low cost, they reacted first to that. So, you know, Lufthansa, they are already selling uh, hands hand, uh, hand baggage only fares on flying to New York. So if the new, new, new airline coming into to, 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 to low cost airline coming on a flight from Germany to New York, you know, they don't have any advantage because Lufthansa do the same. So, 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 so I think, I think until we will find, uh, or we, or but somebody, some, some, some businesses will, will find any really new innovation in that, that they will do completely something differently. They will, you know, uh, or, or, or the new aircraft will be, will be, be created, which is suitable. But now the low, long haul, low cost aircrafts, long haul, long haul, low cost airlines, they are flying the same aircraft, like a, like a, like a legacy airline. So it's really, really difficult to, 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 to find where to, 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 to save. Air Asia, they are very successful in short haul, but not in long haul that much, as far as I know. They call another, they, 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 they have another brand called Air Asia X. And uh, on, on the one hand, they are not so successful at, and, uh, as Air Asia. And on the other hand, they understand that they can't fly such a long sectors. They dropped all the flights to Europe. They, they, they tried to fly from, from Kuala Lumpur to, to London and Paris, I believe, but they dropped that and they said that so far, we will fly only, I think, up to seven hours or so. So they fly uh, Singapore to Australia, Singapore to Japan, to Japan to Thailand to, to, to Japan. So I don't think long haul part of, 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 of Eurasia as of now are so successful like a short haul. Yeah, please. You previously mentioned that uh, in Europe, the regional aircraft won't be as successful in one of the future. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate? Yeah, uh, I think it's just the unit cost on the on the on the small aircraft is so much bigger than on the on the on the big aircraft, and uh, people don't want to pay so much for the luxury of flying small aircraft because it's for them it's not a luxury. So, okay, I maybe like, okay. Let's look for, for for examples. Maybe I can think about the route. Uh, I can fly from Vilnius on a short aircraft. If I look on the short, uh, on the small aircraft, um, let's say, I don't know, which route, which doesn't exist now, let's say Vilnius to Prague, you know, it's one hour, 40 minutes. I can take CRJ 900, for example, you know, and fly, fly, fly the route. But the average seat cost on CRJ 900, you know, I'm just, you know, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit guessing, but from, 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 uh, from, from, from the information I have in my head will be like more than double than I will fly the same route on Airbus 320, even more. I mean, to me, it may even, 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 even bigger. So, you know, so Vizier is selling tickets to Paris for 50 euros 
and I need to sell Prague for 100 euros because my cost is, 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 is way, way higher than, than theirs. So people are not ready to pay for flying directly to Prague just because I fly, 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 fly directly. To, fly, to, to, to pay such a, such, a, such a big difference. I mean, that, that's what's, 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 what's happening here. People are still want to pay some luxury for, for flying direct, but this, 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 this difference uh, is so, 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 so small. So I think that's, that's, that's mainly the reason. And we see that, with, uh, that quite a few of airlines, which were successful 10 or 15 years ago, went out of business. One of them being uh, BMI, BMI Regional. You remember they were flying Embraer 145s. And I mean, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, they were quite successful, you know. But I think what happened to them is that people don't willing to pay 200 euros to fly one hour flight between 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 Brussels and Edinburgh or wherever 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 they were flying. Flybe, they have really really problems. Hadri Airways, they are flying uh, regional aircraft, and they went 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 out of, of, of the business. So this single place I still see regional aircraft being flown is feeding big hubs. So this 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 might happen for the next uh, five years, ten years maybe. Uh, it's still still viable to connect to long haul because the economics works a bit differently in this in this in this case. But I think really. Uh, again, we are really close to this trend. We see Air Baltic. I think they made quite a brave decision two years ago that they will go single fleet of uh, Airbus 220, 300s, which is 145 45 seats. And you know, when I first heard about it, my first thinking was, okay, but what are they going to do on the flights Vilnius to Riga? You know, they need to fly Vilnius to Riga. And the 145 seater will be the smallest, the smallest, the smallest, the smallest aircraft they will have in the fleet uh, in 2023 or, or so. But I think they are just following the trend that you will not be able to make money in Europe uh, with, with small aircraft, and people are not willing. To, you know, people are ready to pay. You know, small small amounts because they see fares on Ryanair and Vizier, and you have to, if you are an airline, you have to do anything to drive your unit costs down as much as much as as much as you can so i think that's that's the main reason yeah. which people fly by business class in europe direct and mm -hmm. uh, why these people not why we haven't uh, business class in charter these people not need to uh, uh, fly to turkey for example you mean on, on a short haul flights yes. uh, Yes, I think it's 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 quite a quite a phenomenon because uh, I think the answer is quite simple because most of the people who are sitting in short haul business class they haven't bought these tickets themselves. Their employers most likely they they bought a ticket. People are live, working in large corporations. These large corporations have the rules. They allow to to, to book big business class tickets and 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 they fly business class. I don't think these days you can see many people who are sitting in short haul business class who paid out of his pocket, uh, whatever, you, or, 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 or he or she is really crazy rich. So, and that's I think I think it's, it's it's the thing with the charters because on charter flights everybody paid from out of out to his pocket, so his or her pocket. So, 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 I think that's 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 the thing. It used to be years ago as well. So. So tourist here, I, I remember, I think in 90s or 80s, even, 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 even at first it was no charter flights, but they were like only like tourist class, class, tourist, tourist, tourist aircraft, usually only economy because, because, because they, they, they flew the, out of that. So, so I think, uh, and uh, of course, on the other hand, uh, um, there are not so many benefits you get on a business class when flying one hour flight or two hours flight. So, 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 so. I think that's the reason. Yeah. As for me, flying to Tokyo or Egypt yeah. is much more important, good company, more ultra good than the business class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think maybe we can finish there. I maybe leave this answer for myself and maybe I will share later on, but, uh, but I think we, I took too much of your time, I, unless there is. Can we at least see them? Yeah, let's see them. <clears throat> uh, 
All right. Madrid, Lisbon, Dubai, St. Petersburg, Lyon, Zurich, Georgia, Edinburgh, Porto, Izmir, Canary Islands, Helsinki, Beijing, Valencia, Caribbean, Zurich, Munich, Heathrow. Yeah? Einhoven. Two answers Rio de Janeiro. New York, <laughs> twice. I think New York and Rio de Janeiro is, is most popular because, because it was mentioned twice. Yeah, so, so I think most of those routes we can, we can, we can apply some, some, some excuse messages out of these t-shirts because yeah, most of them are too, 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 too far from here. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And details will be next to us. Thank you, actually. Thank you.